I really feel like my mother was violated. I really do. When an Orlando man's mother died, he was, as expected, heartbroken. But that heartbreak turned to shock and confusion when he learned his deceased mother's fingerprints were given to an out-of-state jewelry company, which offered to sell him a keepsake using those fingerprints. So he reached out to West 2 Investigates, Sheldon Dutess. Her favorite prayer was the prayer of St. Francis. Jacqueline Cady's devotion to her family and community are some of the memories that her son, Mark Cady Archia, has held on to since her death. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. I mean, she really did. Mark buried his mom in January. Weeks after the funeral, he says he got an email from a company called Legacy Touch telling me that I could purchase a pendant with my mother's fingerprint on it. I read it and I thought, how, who, who gave them my mother's fingerprint and how the world, where did that come from? Um, and I just let it go. But Mark got more emails and even got snail mail about buying a keepsake. I started getting more angry about it. Um, I was a bit confused. Alan Summerhill Funeral Home in DeLand provided the services for Mrs. Katie. Mark followed up with them over the summer, seven months after his mom's funeral. I said, tell me how in the world you all got my mother's fingerprint. And he said, well, we do that, it's normal practice. And I said, and who gave you all permission? My sister, my brother-in-law, and three of my cousins were with me at the funeral home, and nobody remembers this being discussed. I didn't sign off on anything, I didn't give permission. Mark says his mom was very protective of her identity when she was alive, and this whole ordeal has raised privacy concerns for him. So now you have provided this information to a third party that I don't know of, that I did not give permission to. What nefarious act could they do with her fingerprints? I don't know. But, you know, there's so much out there that happens, so much fraud in that, I, I, I just don't know. Despite these concerns, there are no state laws about this kind of practice. West 2 Investigates contacted Florida's Department of Financial Services, which is the state agency that regulates funeral homes. CFO Jimmy Petronas' office sent us a statement saying, while Florida law is silent on this issue, the Department of Financial Services recommends that funeral establishments obtain permission from the deceased legally authorized person before taking fingerprints of the deceased for any purpose. The National Funeral Directors Association also agrees with this approach. Kurt Sof is a member of that group and recommends funeral homes get permission and make sure that families know what's happening. It's important for a family to understand what it is, and that can be through um, education, a brochure, giving them an online tutorial, having a sample. I went to Allen Summerhill Funeral Home to get some answers about Mark's concerns. Well, the funeral home didn't want to talk with me on camera, but told me that they've since changed their policy, and now loved ones have to sign off on this form on whether or not the funeral home can collect their loved one's fingerprints, and they can also opt in or out of marketing from third parties. I really want to see a law passed that protects the dead from the living. Until Florida law changes, Mark is encouraging loved ones to ask questions while planning for a funeral or cremation. You know, no question is a bad question when it comes to your loved ones and to their final arrangements. Sheldon Dutez, WESH 2 News. And Mark tells WESH 2 Investigates that he's already been in touch with some of our local state lawmakers about a bill that addresses the practice of funeral homes taking and sharing fingerprints. We also reached out to Legacy Touch multiple times for comment, but have not yet heard back. Now, if you have an issue you want our investigators to dig into, email the team at investigators.